Welcome to TransAlta's Mississauga Cogeneration Facility. This video is part of your orientation and training package, whether you are a TransAlta new hire or a contractor that is expected to work at one of our sites. TransAlta owns and operates a number of Cogen facilities in Ontario. While similar in nature, each facility has unique issues due to their locations and the hazards that may be present. However, our policies and our attitude towards safety are the same throughout. Your site contact person is a TransAlta employee. That person is ultimately responsible for your work to ensure the compliant, safe, legal and efficient completion of your job. They may assign all or some of their responsibilities to other employees or contractors. Your foreman or supervisor will clarify who your TransAlta site contact person will be. Your contact person may not necessarily be responsible for or involved in the work you do. However, he or she is your primary contact at all times during your work here. If at any time you have questions with regards to work, always ask your site contact or supervisor. We have an expectation that every person working on our site is a safety leader. This means you hold yourself and others you work with to the highest safety standards. Our video touches on many of the fundamentals you will need to accomplish this, including following site policies and procedures, as well as legislated requirements. To start, TransAlta has developed the following six life-saving rules. These are not negotiable. Various energy isolating devices are used throughout our sites. The lockout and tagout of equipment through our safe work permitting system is mandatory. Verify that equipment has been completely isolated and locked out before starting work. You must have proper fall protection and training to work at heights. Use your fall protection when working at heights greater than 3 meters. Safety harnesses have to be full body style. Waist belts are not acceptable. A 100% tie-off and Y style shock absorbing lanyards are to be used. Always determine a proper anchor point and calculate your total fall distance in the event of a fall. When fall protection is used, a documented fall protection rescue plan is mandatory. Remember to inspect your equipment before each use and treat it with respect. Prior to starting work, the potential for falling objects must be reviewed and documented in the JSA for FAHA process. It must include the potential for workers to drop materials from height, as well as the potential for falling objects from other work going on above. Hand tools and portable power tools required for a job must be secured when they are used in elevated areas. The use of spider straps, rope tie-offs, tool pouches, tote boxes and canvas bags are examples of controls to be used. Small items should be contained within canvas bags, buckets, toolboxes or similar containers. Do not store anything in coverall pockets. A chin strap or ratchet suspension is also required where wind is a factor or when bending over or awkward body positioning is required at an elevated area. Use floor barriers on grating where small objects may slip through the grating. Toll boards must be installed on the exposed edges of the grating when it's removed from the rigging and hoisting of large components. Do not place anything near a guardrail that is lower than the mid-rail and could be knocked over. Carts and dollies used to transport materials at height need raised sides to contain the materials. Alternatively, large containers can be placed on the carts to contain the materials. In instances where objects cannot be secured, set up debris nets, catch platforms or canopies prior to work to catch or deflect falling objects. A red ribbon control zone can be set up whenever there is a risk of falling objects below the work area. Do this prior to the start of the work. During the setup of a control zone, specific consideration must be given to the potential for objects to bounce or rebound while falling. Hoisting and rigging is a high-risk activity.
This kind of work must take place following the regulations outlined in the Ontario Occupational Health and Safety Act and TransAlta's internal standards. Hoisting and rigging work requires both a JSA and FLAHA. The plan must be discussed and included in these documents before starting the work. Use taglines, know all load readings and wear required additional PPE before starting the lift. Also flag off the area before operating the hoisting equipment. Hoisting and rigging training is mandatory before using hoisting and rigging equipment. During any lifts and if in any doubts, stop the operation and consult with your supervisor. Everyone is obligated to refuse or stop unsafe work. The health and safety of our employees, the communities and the environment where we operate are of paramount importance at TransAlta. We believe all incidents are preventable and we require all employees and contractors to abide by the policies and procedures of these sites and facilities. If at any time you have questions, please contact your work leader or site contact.